In the end, trophies fade. They gather dust. Some even find their way into the back room, but the memories of those hunts last a lifetime. The instant rush of adrenaline that comes from the first flash of antler in the November woods is what we remember 20 years later. Memories are the true reward for hundreds of hours in a tree. While it may seem that we are hunting deer, we are really there to harvest memories that will carry us through the darkest winter. The 2017 season produced its share of riveting stories and lasting memories. I will never forget my hunt for the wide tin, a hunt that produced a roller coaster of emotions over a two week period, ending with an action packed <laughs> encounter. And I'm sure the vision of the lone oak buck running over the hill after catching us climbing into the tree will haunt me the rest of my life. The last day hunt for a mature eight pointer down in the plow down plot is also permanently burned into my mental hard drive. I'm equally sure that Jared and Mike will never forget the excitement of buying and then hunting their new farm, a journey that culminated with Mike killing the oldest buck on the place. He followed that hunt with two more great bucks on his personal farm. But like my adventure with the Lone Oak buck, it was the one that got away that Mike may remember best. Case in point, the one he called 66, a deer he had been following for years. The buyers also had a season with enough emotion adrenaline and memories to last more than a lifetime. Their ups and downs were epic. The biggest buck Caleb had ever hunted slipped through his fingers only to turn up dead after the season. And their famous switcheroo, the day Caleb found redemption, was a thing of beauty. This tree, I tell you, it, you literally never know where they're gonna come from. And the buck that got away that day lived to become part of this year's story. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. We live for those memories that come with finding, patterning, and hunting mature bucks. And that process takes life early during the 2018 season when Justin Lubrick finds the same big Missouri eight pointer that gave him the slip in 2017. As soon as the buck goes hard horn, Justin starts pinning down its fall range using trail cameras. The buck he now calls Misfit proves to be a homebody, showing up in exactly the same area where he had spent the summer and the previous fall. On opening day of the Missouri bow season, Justin makes his first move. It's uh, opening day of um, archer season here in Missouri. We've been getting several daylight pictures of this fit in this corner here. And uh, if he does what he's been doing, we should be in the money. I no shot. I ain't got a shot, Tyler. That's the eighth encounter I've had within 80 yards with him from last year and now. So we're gonna come here in the morning, make a minor adjustment, move the stand 10 yards closer to the field to where we can shoot the bean field. I couldn't have asked for my 2018 season to start off any better. It's September the 16th. We just got back up here to the farm. Uh, we're going to be hunting the same stand location as we did uh, last night. We come up here today and move the set because we had an encounter with Misfit last night at 46 yards. I couldn't get him stopped, so we moved the stand 10 yards closer to the field edge to where we could shoot the field and shoot where we've been picking him up on the cutting back cameras in the corner. It's a little warm tonight, but with us seeing all the activity on the cameras and then seeing him last night, we got to get back in the same location. Hopefully, he uh, makes his appearance again tonight. Well, we just got set up in the set we moved this afternoon. These deer, we seen a bunch of deer in here last night, bucks and does. They are definitely destroying these green beans, so we're definitely in the hot seat. We know he's in that timber, that's his bedroom. And fingers crossed, he does what he did last night and we'll be in the money. I can see some movement down there, but I can't make it out. 
I just hope he does what he did last night and comes right up in here. Why do you warm me out? First seen him about 5.40 down here in the woods where we seen him the other night. Sure enough, I look over to the left and he's coming up the logging road and he veered off and did the same thing he did last night. We're gonna have to give him time, but he's gonna die, no doubt. Well, we just got here to the arrow. So I probably caught a lot and he was going on the way. So we're gonna back out of here. We're gonna play this safe. Down, he's right there. See? Yeah. See? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Let me get him out of here. He died instantly. No doubt, no doubt about it. Wow. Oh. Oh, he's stiff. I'm kind of speechless right now. He's got a kicker on the back here I didn't know he had. I couldn't be more happier to start my 2018 season off by wrapping a tag around this five and a half year old buck I call Misfit. I had so many encounters with him last year in history with him, especially that one hunt late season last year on the north end of the sanctuary in the food plot where he fought off two bucks and then rolled right into 2018 as we started velvet footage of him coming out of this same sanctuary into this same bean field I killed him on tonight. And then with all the history and the recent trail pictures of him in this corner, that's why we hunted last night and had an encounter and tonight. And that minor adjustment we did today by moving the stand from where I seen him last night and then to tonight, it allowed me to shoot into the field and he didn't go I think 50 yards and he piled up. Unbelievable deer here. My preparation for the season was much like Justin's, hours spent glassing bean fields. I filmed some great up-and-comers that sorely tempted my mature buck-only resolve. When August gave way to September, I was still looking for my first legitimate target. Mentally, I kept coming back to a deer we had seen once in 2016 and gotten lots of trail cam photos of in 2017. We even found his sheds within 200 yards of the house in March of 2018. Now called the Big Seven, because he had been a seven pointer in 2017, I went all in. A person only has so much time to think about and scout the deer on his radar. I spent all my whitetail hunting capital on that one deer. Ignoring other, possibly more killable bucks, I put out my cuttyback cameras in search of the Big Seven. Jared Mills spent the summer working on their new farm. He put in several small food plots and placed stands in all the right places. While the first year had been a great start, Jared and Mike had even bigger plans for 2018. There had still been several very good bucks on the farm when the 2017 season ended and the guys couldn't wait to see what they had grown into. Bucks like Marino, a great buck they passed up on the first day they hunted the new farm, and JJ, a big clean 10-pointer. Finally there was the giant 8-pointer they named Eli, 
who narrowly avoided the arrow in 2017 like a cat with nine lives. However, before it even got started, the action on the new farm came to a screeching halt when six inches of rain, 100 miles upstream, pushed the river over its banks and flooded the entire property. Weeks later, the water finally receded, leaving only dead food plots and a timber devoid of deer. And to make matters worse, he had recently moved, ending his hopes of hunting some of his old permission farms, one of them being the spot where he killed a dandy the previous season. Still a month from its first day, the 2018 season had already set up to be a challenging one for Jared. With the river farm flooded, Mike Reed pulled back to his personal farm, where he hoped for a rematch with a dandy 6x6 and another great buck with a big split G3 whose shed Mike had found in the spring. Caleb and Taylor Byers spent the summer improving three different hunting spots. One of their top priorities was to plant beans in the small field that bordered their backyard. There was a spot where they had encountered a buck they had called tweezers the previous fall. Next on the whitetail deer list was the task of creating bedding cover on a farm where the couple hoped to refine two solid bucks one with a double throat patch, and the other, a big mismatched buck they called Nemo. Finally was the project of maintaining the small but very productive clover plot where they planned to hunt two more great bucks. Believe it or not, every one of these bucks showed back up during the summer of 2018. Owen Riegler is new to the team for 2018, but definitely not new to hunting big whitetails. Owen entered the summer bent on finding back four great bucks with which he had a lot of history. First was the buck Owen called Trey, a giant by anyone's standards. Flyers was number two, a buck whose rack blew up like an A-bomb from the prior year. Uno was next, an equally impressive deer with a huge typical frame, a buck Owen picked up the sheds from that spring. Finally, Crabs, the master of the farm, the oldest buck that Owen planned to hunt and one of the largest. Of the four, Crabs was potentially the most killable, and with that buck in mind, Owen spent the dog days of summer creating the perfect trap. So this is the area where Crabs runs. He uses this plot a lot during the rut. And he's come down this trail I don't know how many times, and I'm hoping he does it one time when we're sitting in that redneck blind. He hits that scrape for the last time. It's what we're going for. <laughs> Ooh, I was nervous just watching him right there. That's Crabs. It's the first time we've seen him. We've been wanting to see him in the worst way. He has got a pile of antler on his head. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to see him from the stand. Owen's first hunt of the season targets crabs in the same redneck blind overlooking the rub post, but it is not Owen who draws the lucky straw, but his daughter Paige. All right, here it is, September 21st, the first hunt of the year. We've got uh, Several bucks in this spot right here. We've got Paige's muzz buck. He is a really nice framey deer. He uses this area a lot. And then we've got the one and only, this area is legendary for a buck we call Crabs. He uses this area a lot. So if he steps out, I might fall out of the blind. That's a big old buck. Well, we'll see how it goes. We got a couple hours to sit in here. Crabs was a no-show. Two days later, Owen and Paige head back to the field, this time to a permission farm where Flyers and several other mature bucks is living. You always gotta grab a foxtail on any, any hike out in the timber. It's customary. You watch, we'll see a shooter tonight. Every time I chew on a foxtail, it happens. Well, we got a little toasty getting in here. Got a little yearling buck in the field already. We just got set up, but 
I've had a lot of confidence about tonight. It should be an awesome evening. We've got a couple of really nice bucks in here. We've got one we call Blades. He's like a five or six year old buck, really nice deer. And we've got an old one we call Grandpa. He's just a clean eight. He's got a huge base, it's all gnarly bases. He's not real wide, but he's a cool buck. And there's a couple of tens in here too that we haven't named, but should be a good evening. About 6.30 or so right now. Still got high hopes. We've seen a couple more deer. Tonight's the night. Never stop believing. He's nice, huh? I think he's a little bit bigger than what you thought he was. He trips my trigger. <laughs> That's a great smell. You smell that? It's the smell of success. <laughs> it's the smell of success. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, man. I think your heart's shot. Oh, jeez. Yeah, there's a lot of blood. I guess there was a two-year-old buck out there for a long time and he kept looking back through the corn there. Four or five minutes went by and finally that buck popped out and Paige saw him first. He said, there's a buck right there and I put the glasses on him. I said, man, that's a pretty nice buck. It's like, that's your hunt. It's up to you, but I don't know if I'm passing him. That's a good deer. And down he goes. Yeah. Down goes Frazier. I love hunting. Some people are like, why do you like hunting so much? Like, yeah, I can't even explain it. Just, <laughs> how do you? Paige's buck wasn't the only great deer taken during the 2018 youth season. We are strong supporters of youth hunting, and several members of the team take the time to mentor our next generation of hunters. Yeah, basically, that's what it's all about, you know, is getting, getting the kids out and enjoy the outdoors and get them hooked on this deer hunting and, and just spend uh, quality time out in the timber with them. And, and I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of fun. Uh, today is September 26th and Ash and I are hunting for Iowa youth season. Hopefully a mature buck can walk past us, but I told um, Ashton that anything that steps out, he's more than welcome to shoot. You ready? Yep. <laughs> They'll come up here. How was that? That was awesome. <laughs> is that your biggest buck? <laughs> no, he's <it's job. laughs> Oh, it's so brown. With summer preparations now behind us, and a few target bucks showing up to drive our expectations, we look forward with great anticipation to opening day. There is still much work to do in the patterning process, and many more ridges and valleys in the roller coaster ride that we are on. But the first leg has proven to be a fast one. We are finally strapped in with our arms in the air, committed to the wild ride that we affectionately call Chasing November. <laughs>